we learned that there was a, been a 10% drop um, in people actually receiving that service, even though really the law hasn't changed. What do you attribute that to? Um, they're afraid if they come to ask for the service to get food stamps, uh, they'll be arrested, they'll be imprisoned, they'll be separated from their kids. P did people actually say that in the surveys? We, we know that from um, other from press reports, from talking to people who actually run programs. The association made a statement that police violence is a public health issue. What do you mean by that? Police violence um, creates both injury and death, um, inappropriately, of course, and it creates an environment of fear. Uh, and we know that that fear environment influences our children's their health and well-being. It uh, influences their, um, their mental health, it influences their, their actual growth. Um, it results in early childhood trauma for those children who live in these very, um, these communities in which people are afraid. Um, so it's a big issue. What is the significance of the association declaring it as a public health issue? I, I think it, it, it brings it uh, to the forefront so that people recognize that it's not just a policing issue, that it's also a health issue. That, so there are other disciplines that have to be involved other than policing. Uh, it allows social workers and um, community workers and others who think about how you bring together communities um, to build a, a holistic community, one that, that is um, uh, where people feel safe, um, which we know drives um, ill health uh, is important. You know, if you're afraid to go out in your community, then you're not going to walk, you're not going to bike, you're not going to let your kids go out and play. And if you're afraid that the people who are supposed to protect you um, are threatening to you, then who do you return to? You're going to need to defend yourself. And that's the problem. One of the last uh, you know, pieces of new information that the association revealed that I want to talk about is how, how students of color experience feelings of fear um, related to crime or violence at a higher rate. Can, can you explain the significance of those findings? It, it goes with all the other challenges we have uh, for um, communities of color, um, feeling threatened, um, feeling targeted by, by others. and. Um, you know, when you, when you feel threatened or you feel targeted, you respond to that. Um, and, you know, to the extent that we just want people to feel um, equally safe uh, in their homes and in their communities, um, I think if we can create a society where we all feel equally safe, uh, we'll have uh, much more prosperity. We talked about a number of concerning issues. Where's the hope? We are seeing um, much more lower rates of cardiovascular disease, for example. We're making tremendous progress um, in tobacco control for combustible tobacco. We're having challenges now with e-cigarettes, but we're, we're, we're getting our hands around that problem. At least we're trying to get our hands around that problem. You're seeing some leveling off on things like obesity. Um, we're doing much better health education. The health of the public is getting better uh, in general. Um, we do have things that intervene, like opioids, which has entered the community. Um, and we have things like um, these new um, um, scooters, right, which is now going to be a major disruptor because we got people wearing seatbelts in their cars and helmets on their bikes, but they're all on scooters without helmets. <laughs> so we, we are have some challenges. Um, but I think we, we're very good at identifying those challenges, um, and I think the hope of improving the health of the public um, is, is really strong. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Georges Benjamin. Thank you.